Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today we're going to do a video going more in depth on the RG505 and some of the recent changes. It's going to be a bit of a longer video. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that I released an unbrick method for it. I've been going back and forth the last few days with Gamma Squeeze over on the RGH Discord, and a lot of work's been getting done. We were able to unlock the, well, he was able to find a method to unlock the bootloader. With that, I got a Magisk patched boot image had it signed so that it would still boot and then flashed it back and I now have a working Magisk on this build as well as I disabled the Anbrinic launcher and used uh, Daisho instead and used Button Mapper to remap the buttons. You don't need to root to do this. You actually already have what's called a stock or system root. There's just no app to control it but the app that we use to uh, disable everything will work on your device as it is right now. You want this app right here. Uh, system app uninstaller or app uninstaller. It's on the Play Store. You'll notice that it's the right app because you'll see the logo here. And you literally just want to disable RG Launcher and that will disable Anbrinix Launcher. You, this is the button mapper APK you want to install. You can get a free version or you can pay for Pro. I opted to buy the Pro version. Then you click on Add Button, click the plus symbol, and then you want to tap the button that would normally launch the Ambernic launcher, and it'll capture the button as F10 here. Then you click on it, and you can customize what it does. So you can see one tap will launch my different front end two taps the Play Store, and three taps Assistant. So for Assistant here, you want to hold the button. What's the weather? It's 46 and mostly sunny. Today, it'll be cloudy, with a high of 52 and a low of 31. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 38. Let me turn that up and do that again. It's 46 and mostly sunny. Today, it'll be cloudy, with a high of 52. So you get the idea, I single tap the button. Give you guys a quick look at how this is set up here. This is a custom theme you can download. I don't recommend playing with them because you don't seem to be able to revert to the stock theme without uninstalling and reinstalling the app. But they are out there if you want to play with them. They're in the settings options. I've been getting surprisingly good PS2 performance. I didn't expect games like Final Fantasy X to work, but they do, and they're actually a playable frame rate, which is a huge plus. Besides 11, I'm able to do Final Fantasy 1 to 12 all on this one device, which I really like. I'll give you a quick example. Had to fix something. It does take a moment to run, but it will run fine.
The death of Lord Raslahe. You there. Can you hear me? <coughs> it's as I feared. They're slowing us down. Do not say that. Not all of us are here for love of battle. He f I'm not going to make you watch me play that forever, but you get the point. It's absolutely playable. I haven't tried this one yet, so let's do that together. Welcome to Hogwarts. Now that you're here, you can... Congratulations! This challenge is all about passing the profit. Your three chases will be flying. Hi there, Harry here. To pass the quaffle, press the action button. Use the broomstick and to direct your pass. Obviously not every game works great, like I tried God of War and that's pretty laggy, but a good chunk of them that I've tried that are not on the harder side to run do work great, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Especially when you're playing them on the OLED. Thank you. 
Round one. Fight! <laughs> See, now when it does that, you can change some of the values here in an attempt to fix it. I'll do that quickly to show you guys how that works. You can try underclocking it, slow things down a bit. Round one. Fight! It's definitely a little slow, but it's not unplayably slow. You can also lower the values a little more to help it. With PS2, some games you kind of just got to play around with the settings to get better performance out of it. Another one that surprised me here is Skyline, the Nintendo Switch emulator. Now, I couldn't get Lion King to work, and obviously some of the harder-to-run Mario games and stuff don't work, but a lot of the easier-to-run and the indie games are actually working fine, which was impressive. Round one! <laughs> 
It isn't perfect. Sometimes it crashes. See that one's a bit slow, but it does work. You get the idea. I'm not going to sit there and mess with the uh, Switch emulator all day. It does crash now and then, and not every game works, but there are some games that work, so it's worth your time looking into, especially if you have a Switch and the ability to just dump your indie games easily.
As you can see, we get decent PSP performance. God of War needs to just be one at run at 1x, but most games can be run at 2 or even 3x, which looks really good on this OLED display. For Redream here, I can't advise you strongly enough to pay the $5 and get the uh, Lifetime Pro membership. The reason being is you can upscale the resolution. Like really upscale the resolution if you have a powerful PC with a good display, for example.
In our case here, 1280 by 960 seems to not impact performance and make it look better. I'll show you what I mean. I guess if I knew what button I had hotkeyed to drive, it would have been a lot easier. You can go 16 by 9 too. If you don't want to have it uh, 4 by 3 on your screen, make it take up most of the or all of the OLED. Broadway present NFL Blitz 2000. Broadway present NFL Blitz. The Chicago Bears versus the St. Louis Rams. Go! <laughs> 
I never said I was good at the game, I just said I would show you that it works and looks nice. Capcom presents Capcom Marvel versus Capcom <laughs> For me, GameCube is where it gets a little bit dicey. It's not that it doesn't work okay, it's that whether it works better on MMJ or the original emulator is kind of a toss-up, and you have to play with the settings a bit. So it does work fine, it's just that you have to put in the time and effort to set everything up properly.
but as you can see, unoptimized out of the box, not a good time. So as you can see with GameCube, with games you can get a playable frame rate. It's not going to be perfect, and there are things you can do to improve that as well. It just requires going back and forth between the two versions of Dolphin and doing some manual tweaking yourself. Duck Station here is hands down my favorite PS1 emulator by a long shot. Playing PS1 games in 720p is just awesome. PS1. Sony Computer Entertainment America presents a Universal Interactive Studios production. A game created and developed by Naughty Dog.
Uka, Uka is free. No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. None dare to fail the prince. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look, I have a mask helping me. As you can see, that runs okay. It's uh, it's not just that it plays the games fine, it's that with a lot of stuff on Android, you can upscale it and make it look better as well. And with an OLED display, that's actually a really good thing in my opinion.
as you can see, Magisk is installed and it's got Zygisk access as well. Um, that's for the Zygot. I don't really want to go too deep into an explanation as to what that is, but it, stuff that happens before Android's fully loaded, it's kind of like accessing part of the boot stuff in a way. I don't want to go into huge detail on it, but... As you can see with Citra, it's kind of hit and miss. Some games work, some games don't. In the 19th century, people are strong believers of superstition and legend. Adventurers seek the world for fortune, glory, and a legend. Now, imitation to the adventure war.
location. I think you get the idea. All in all, this, in terms of emulation and retro gaming, it can do a lot of different things. Once you get up past, say, GameCube, for example, it's kind of a mixed bag, but uh, the fact that it runs any GameCube or 3DS or Switch, for that matter at all, is impressive in and of itself. And PS2. Don't want to forget about PS2. Then you add in the actual Android games. You get the idea. If you combine the entire library of Android games plus all the retro games that this can do and the fact that it's got an OLED screen and 5G Wi-Fi and Rumble, it's definitely an awesome device. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up there because this is getting extremely on the long side. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video.